Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kaylin, this is Maisie, crazy Maisie as we call her, who is actually experiencing her first and only heat cycle. Okay, so I'm just gonna dive right in. I'm gonna show you guys um, majority of the products that I keep in my medicine cabinet at home for um, acute care situations. So I'm not gonna show you every supplement, every herb that I keep stocked in my house. These are more so things um, as far as like, uh, you know, a cold or flu or um, upset stomach, uh, things like that. Things that are acute situations, not chronic problems. You know, I have other herbs like red raspberry and alfalfa and oat straw and I, you know, I take a prenatal and I take B12 and, but those really aren't uh, what we're going to be talking about today. I'm not going to dive in deep on every product, but a few of them that I find are most used or most important, I will kind of talk a little bit more on, but there's a lot to get to, so let's get started. Okay. The first things I'm going to talk about um, are kind of like basic core nutrients for when you're sick that are really important, um, in my opinion. Now, I'm not a doctor. I have worked in the natural health field for almost a decade, managing medical practices and working as a patient educator, patient liaison, a patient care coordinator for naturopathic physicians, um, more naturally minded, uh, MDs as well as um, a more functional medicine doctor. So I have managed in the last 10 years um, three medical practices in uh, Michigan, Washington State, and New York State, which were the states you know that I moved to because of my husband being in the Navy, um, which he's now you know retired from the military. Um, but I I learned so much about. Um, nutrition, about the importance of food, about the importance of supplements, about herbal medicine, things like that, and I continue to learn. Um, I do still work in the natural health field with my sister-in-law, who is a naturopathic consultant pursuing her naturopathic doctorate. Her name is Tanya Holcomb. I'll link her website down below. I'm amazed by her body's ability to heal itself when given the right tools and put into an optimal state for wellness. And there are definitely times where we all struggle, um, you know, certain things can knock our immune system down and, um, you know, there's just things that I, I feel like are so important to have on hand for those acute care situations. Um, I don't really get sick very often anymore, uh, neither does my husband Trent. But, you know, there are certainly times that things are needed, you know, colds and flu go around every year. Obviously, um, what's going on right now in the world is a bit different as far as COVID-19, but these are just things that I like to have on hand. Cats in heat are super weird. I still love her. She's just a really noisy little creep right now. Okay, so I'm gonna dive on in. First thing that I always keep on hand is vitamin C. Now, this is a whole food vitamin C and it's pretty low dose. Liposomal vitamin C is most recommended, but this is just what I have right now. So vitamin C, I do take vitamin C every day, especially right now with things that are going on in the world. Um, vitamin C is critical to a healthy immune system and um, for the most part, everyone should take vitamin C. Again, I am not a doctor, so none of this information is intended for um, being taken as medical advice. This is informational, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt, please do your own research, please talk to your doctor, um, and just know that this is my medicine cabinet, this is what works for my family, for myself, and this is based on, you know, my almost 10 years of experiential and professional and personal knowledge. Vitamin A. Um, vitamin A is a super powerful um, immune boosting supplement. So vitamin A and vitamin D are two things that I take together anytime there's uh, any kind of a sickness going on, especially with vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin D together, those three, super potent, super powerful for boosting the immune system. Um, I take vitamin D every day. 
I'm taking vitamin C every day right now. I do not take vitamin A every day. I only take vitamin A when um, I'm dealing with any kind of cold or flu or, you know, illness. Um, another one I always have on hand is turmeric or curcumin. Um, you know, turmeric is a spice. Uh, that's not the same thing as taking turmeric capsules. You would need to you, you couldn't really ingest as much turmeric just using the cooking spice as you could um, from like a turmeric compound. Uh, black pepper is needed um, in order to actually um, make turmeric more bioavailable and um, assimilated into the body. So these are turmeric pills. I give these to our aging dog Savage a lot, um, actually daily I should say, for um, her arthritis and joint pain and things like that and turmeric for inflammation is so powerful so that's another one um, something else that I like to keep on hand this is a um, herbal aloe skin gel it's basically um, this this isn't just aloe it has sheep sorrel burdock slippery elm rhubarb cat's claw chamomile so it's got different herbs and things in it but this is like a really really nice um, gel. I love this company. They also make, this is herbal aloe forest from the herbal answer and they make like raw aloe for drinking which is amazing if you have a sore throat or digestive problems. So um, I, I really love this company and love their products and this aloe skin gel is great for like um, you know burns and um, skin infections and things like that. This is awesome stuff. Uh, another one I always have on hand is some type of natural antihistamine instead of using like Benadryl. I like this one from Designs for Health, which is called Hista Ease, which, you know, most natural antihistamines are going to have quercetin in them. Um, there's another one from uh, Nature's Sunshine. I can't think of the name of it. Hista Block? Hista Block. Uh, that I like as well. So I always keep a natural antihistamine on. Now, uh, also for inflammation, this is nice. This is just an Arnica gel, and um, I like to keep this on hand for, I'm running super low on it, you can see, uh, like sore muscle, muscle pain, stuff like that. Um, you know, bruising, you can just rub it on the, you know, hit your funny bone, put some of this on, and uh, you'll be feeling funky fresh. Uh, colloidal silver, I always keep some colloidal silver liquid on hand, which has a lot of um, antiviral properties. It's amazing for like if you have an eye infection or um, you know, um, for like if, if you have a toothache, you can you know rinse it in your mouth, that kind of stuff. Um, I also keep a silver gel. So this I was using in LA, my five month old's eyes were kind of having a bit of a goopy eye and getting redness. So this just makes it so much easier to apply to places like the eye having a silver gel or to a cut or something. Um, another important one is magnesium. I have three different kinds of magnesium. Um, mag glycinate is magnesium more for um, just like everyday uh, magnesium intake. This one is great for, you know, promoting restful sleep and stuff like that. Um, magnesium citrate is the type of magnesium that actually brings water to the colon to help to loosen your bowels. So um, for constipation, magnesium is awesome. And this is a magnesium which has magnesium citrate and this is a powder form. So you just mix it with water and, um, you know, that's another nice product. You would not want to just take a magnesium citrate straight every day. Uh, you would definitely see some loose stools and things like that. And this is um, a magnesium, it's an ionic magnesium, which has just 400 milligrams. It doesn't say what type of magnesium it is. So um, magnesium is also great for sore muscles and things like that. Um, you know, it's like very soothing. Uh, it's best to take magnesium like an hour before bed. That's when it's most um, absorbable and usable by the body. Some other things I have here, cell salts are um, homeopathic remedies. Now Highland, Highlands, 
Highlands is the brand that I like to use. I also have these um, cell salts, which came in a kit that I got as a gift for my sister-in-law. There are 12 different cell salts, and there's also um, something called Bioplasma, which is a combination of all 12 cell salts, which is really just more of like a mineral. So I like the Highland cell salts because they do just melt in your mouth. I'm not going to just get super in depth on anything to do with homeopathics or homeopathy. Um, a homeopathic is basically um, something that's diluted and diluted and diluted and diluted until only the essence of the thing remains. Now, homeopathy has been around for a long time. You can certainly research it yourself if you're interested. I do have a couple books that I'm going to show you in a minute that I recommend if you're interested in homeopathy or you already use homeopathy and you want to explore that more. I have some great books that my sister-in-law had given me um, that are really helpful for dealing with things like that. Um, so this is also a homeopathic kit that I have and I use this a lot. Um, and it's got, as you can see, I'll just kind of show you here, it's got a bunch of different homo homeopathic remedies. This is made by Helios. You can get this on Amazon or you can get it directly from their website, I believe. So this has um, a complete list. It also comes with a little book that just, you know, has a basic guide. So um, ones that I use a lot would be like must-haves for me, um, Arnica. Uh, for pain, for inflammation, um, I, lose, I use chamomile a lot, uh, calc carb for Ellie when she's teething is another big one, um, aconite for like shock and trauma, you know, falling down or um, you just, you know, being in like a really stressful, shocking, traumatic situation, um, things like that. So this is a whole kit. And again, I'm not going to dive into homeopathy. That's not what this video is about. Whether you agree or disagree with the use of homeopathy, um, whatever floats your boat, I use them. They are definitely a staple in my house. This is also another um, type of homeopathic. Uh, Boron makes these. They are the same people that make this Arnica gel, and I've used their products for years, and they're definitely a reputable company. Um, you can buy these little, you know, things, little containers, and you just have pellets that you pop out. Um, this is Cantharis. Um, they make them in different dosages, and, you know, I have, like, Arnica ones I keep in my diaper bag, and or chamomile ones, excuse me, I keep in my diaper bag. These are the three books that I'm just going to briefly show you if you're interested in learning more about cell salts or, um, homeopathy or um, using um, homeopathic remedies in your house. Um, this one is called Homeopathic Medicine for Children and Infants and this book is by Dana Ullman and um, it's just got a, a lot of information in it. Uh, it categorizes you know by different conditions what uh, uh, homeopathics would be beneficial and talks more about them and their usage. Uh, this is another one which is called Homeopathic Medicine at Home, Natural Remedies for Everyday Ailments and Minor Injuries by Ms. Seamond B. Panos, who is an MD, and Jane Heimlich. And a forward by Dr. Robert Mendelson, who wrote this really great book, How to Raise a Healthy Child in Spite of Your Doctor. Um, and he is an MD. He's a um, was considered. I'm not sure if you know this. Well, this book is a bit old, but um, a leading pediatrician in the United States. And then the last one here, which is homeopathic cell salt remedies, healing with nature's 12 mineral compounds by Nigel Lennon and Lionel Rolf. So these are a few great books that I recommend if you're interested in exploring you know, homeopathy more that you check out these books. Um, also on the lines of homeopathy, these are made by Highlands as well. I always have these in stock um, in my house. Ellie's been teething since she was like two and a half months old, which, you know, she's five and a half months now. Um, so we've tried a lot of different things as far as teething is concerned. And these are two products that I use um, 
religiously with her. So they are daytime and nighttime oral pain relief for teething babies. And again, these are homeopathics. They are made by Highlands. And um, I, I always have those in stock. And Ellie, you know, they just melt in your baby's mouth. Again, they're like soft like the uh, cell salts. Okay, the next things I'm gonna get into here are essential oils. These are by no means all the essential oils I have or use regularly, but these are the essential oils that I went through my, um, you know, collection and said what essential oils have the most medicinal value, especially in an acute care situation. The first oil I'm going to talk about is eucalyptus. Um, so the first oil I'm going to show you is eucalyptus, which is great for if you have, um, you know, like breathing issues, any kind of like respiratory um, congestion, stuff like that, diffusing eucalyptus or diluting it and mixing it on the chest is a great idea. These two are more for like um, pain, especially relating to like back pain, muscle pain, stuff like that. So Valor's nicknamed Chiropractor in a Bottle and it's great for putting on the spine when you have more like spinal related back pain. Panaway is great for, um, you can make like a sore muscle rub, kind of like Icy Hot. Um, it's, it's really nice for rubbing into sore muscles, sore back, things like that. So these are more, I mean, Valor's more structural. Uh, clove oil, going along with teething, uh, clove oil is something that I always use in Ellie's mouth to rub on her gums. However, your clove is a hot oil, so you can't just um, put that directly on the skin or in the mouth or anything like that. Especially for babies, you can't put any essential oils really on a baby's skin. Um, it's just not safe to do that, so um, you don't want to burn them and um, that's why I always have this on hand, which is fractionated coconut oil. And this is basically like, if you don't know what this is, put a little on my hand, oh, I have it. This is, I'm scared, I don't want it to go everywhere. A very thin, liquidy coconut oil. And this is what you would use to dilute something like clove oil to put in your little ones. Um, mouth so I use like a quarter cup of fractionated coconut oil to like 12 drops of clove oil personally again that's what I do for me uh, definitely you know test it out stuff like that I put it in my mouth first and make sure it's not you know if it's not hurting me it's not gonna hurt her um, so fractionated coconut oil is a must-have when you're using essential oils even for adults because there are some essential oils that are just hot and shouldn't go directly on the skin um, so the Digize is another one that I like to mix with a fractionated coconut oil and if Ellie is having any constipation or seems like she has a bellyache, I will mix the diluted Digize um, up and rub some on her tummy. So I like to keep a little bottle of that in our diaper bag as well. Thieves oil, which with everything going on right now in the world with um, COVID-19, Thieves is one that uh, I think it is really important now more than ever um, diffusing thieves oil. This is a vitality line from Young Living, which is um, anyone's with the white labels can be um, ingested. And um, the thieves oil, I always uh, rub on like my collar when I go out places or um, on Ellie's bib. Thieves is amazing, um, has a lot of antibacterial, antiviral components, so this is definitely a must-have for me. I'm also going to be um, making my own sanitizer with Thieves oil, so I'll show you that. I also put Thieves in my homemade cleaner that I make with uh, citrus peels and vinegar. So peppermint oil is another one I like to have on hand for things like, um, you know, stomach aches or nausea when I was pregnant. I use peppermint oil a lot. Uh, also for migraines, it can be rubbed on the temples. Lavender is a must-have. If I had to pick one essential oil, I would pick lavender. It's great for burns, insect bites, calming. I love it in the bath. Ellie loves having it in the bath with, you know, nice Epsom salt and lavender um, in the tub and diffusing it at night next to my bed. Uh, lavender is so calming. You can rub it on baby's feet. So 
really important. Um, one that I use a lot for animals, uh, mostly my chickens right now, but what you can use it with other livestock as well, is oregano oil, which is very um, antibacterial, antifungal. Oregano has so many antibacterial, antiviral, um, antiparasitic properties, and this is a must-have. I have tons of oregano oil. I have it in my chicken first aid kit and extra in my bathroom just because this is one I don't want to run out of. I put this in my chicken's water periodically. All right, so it's actually the next day. I didn't get to finish shooting the video yesterday because my husband interrupted. He called, um, he's been traveling for work. And so I wanted to talk to him and then Ellie woke up from her nap. So it just, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, as a mom to a five and a half month old, uh, sometimes things just have to wait and this was something that was just uh, one of those things. So I'm going to dive back in. They left off, talked about essential oils, homeopathic cell salts, all that. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, herbs here. So I have a lot of these jars that I store a lot of herbs in. Um, I will, again, I'll link, I think I mentioned it, my herbal infusion video if you want to check that out. So I do use a lot of other herbs, but these ones are more so ones that have some type of acute medicinal purpose. If you hear, to, hear a weird thumping noise, Maisie is jumping my cat uh, up on the sliding glass door like a weirdo. Uh, so these are dried elderberries. Uh, now you can't just eat elderberries, there is a, um, a toxicity question, but you can cook these down and make your own elderberry syrup. So. Um, this is uh, a pound of dried elderberries. Um, they're pretty expensive. They run anywhere between $28 to $36 a pound. Um, I was able to pick these up, organic dried elderberries, on Amazon recently, so I wanted to have them and bought them. Um, we are putting in our own elderberry plants this year, so we'll look forward in future years to being able to harvest our own and not need to purchase them. Along the lines of having digestive issues. Um, these are chamomile flowers and chamomile is so soothing to the stomach. Um, again, you know, there's such a difference and I talk about this more in my herbal infusion video of having, you know, a tea bag with some hot water to actually making an infusion with dried or fresh um, tea and really letting it steep. So chamomile is amazing for your digestive system for nausea, um, you know, for pregnancy, I use peppermint and chamomile religiously tea, um, and this is just amazing for the digestive system and also very soothing, calming, relaxing, um, you know, if you're trying to wind down or something. Plus, it smells amazing. It smells so good. So, chamomile, always have on hand. This is peppermint. Uh, again, along lines of digestive, stomach issues, gastrointestinal issues, uh, also smells amazing, just like the chamomile. Um, peppermint is so wonderful for um, soothing the tummy and upset stomach, nausea, all of those things. Uh, peppermint, you can't go wrong. I have a big, beautiful squirrel. I'll show you real quick. On her feeder here. Windy day, squirrels eating the last of the corn on there. We have really big squirrels at our house. We have two beautiful, mature walnut trees and the squirrels, you know, stash them all over the yard and um, they eat them all winter long. So. All right, getting back into it, herbs. Um, this is probably one of the most important herbs that I keep in my house, which is stinging nettle. It kind of smells a little earthy, I guess. Uh, stinging nettle has so many immune boosting properties. It's something I use in my infusion every day. And just for overall immune health, stinging nettle is really, really powerful, potent medicine. And the last herb I'm going to show you that's in these jars is um, holy basil or Tulsi. This is a three Tulsi blend of dried herbs, which has um, Rama, Vana, and Krishna varieties of Tulsi. It smells incredible. It is the best smell ever. Um, I, it's just like, whoa. It hits your senses and you go, what is that? I want it. I mean, 
I had around my mother-in-law over and I let her smell it and she's like, I need some of that. It smells so good. Um, it's very, very relaxing. It's good for stress, for anxiety, for, you know, depression. It's just soothing and um, I'm adding this into my herbal infusions now. Again, based off the recommendation of my sister-in-law, Tanya Holcomb, who is a naturopathic consultant and was my doula through pregnancy and she really guided me with herbal infusions and still does. Uh, with a lot of my health protocols and the Tulsi was a great recommendation from her. It smells good, it tastes delicious, it's so good for you. I do have holy basil seeds, I'm going to be planting it in my medicinal garden this year and I'm really looking forward to having that grow. I hear that it still smells amazing just as a fresh plant growing in the garden. It's great for pollinators, so Tulsi, Tulsi, Tulsi or holy basil. Now this is a slippery elm and slippery elm this is you can buy i think the like just a dried root i believe um it smells kind of like maple syrup a little bit um it's in a powdered form and this is amazing for soothing the uh, GI system. It coats the GI tract. If you have diarrhea, it can help to slow diarrhea down. So I've actually been using this with Ellie um, recently because she's had a little bit of loose stools and so this stuff is delicious. You can mix it in water, you can mix it in oatmeal, um, and this is something that I always want to have on hand. This was really affordable. This is 113 grams or 4 ounces and I think it was uh, like eight dollars and this will last a long time you don't really use very much slippery elm when you're using it okay so this is a marshmallow root tincture from herb farm and marshmallow root has a lot of uh, amazing health properties it's good for cough and cold and it's believed to help to loosen mucus it has anti-inflammatory benefits um, can be really helpful for the skin or for wounds when applied properly to skin type abrasions and things like that and also um, is believed to have some um, pain relieving um, effects you know acting as a anti-inflammatory analgesic uh, effects so marshmallow root is something good to have on hand especially cough or cold season uh, this is echinacea and echinacea is a really powerful immune support during times of you know cold and flu just depending on what your symptoms are but this is um, something that I always like to have on hand. Um, also going along with immune support and also wound healing and things like that is raw honey. Now this is honey that I get from some local Amish. Uh, honey is amazing when applied to the skin. I put raw honey in my face lotion that I've been making for years and if you have a burn, you know, honey, aloe, those kinds of things um, are really amazing for putting on the skin. Um, also, like if you have a cold, you know, soothing the throat um, or cough um, in your, you know, tea when you're sick. And when you get local honey too, that's really important instead of buying honey from your store. Um, actually, a lot of honey in the store, you know, that's not like an organic raw honey um, is going to have additional things in it. And um, when you get local honey, the benefit is, is that it can help with seasonal allergies because you're getting honey, um, you're getting that bee pollen from local bees that are pollinating local plants and that is really important so uh, raw honey local as, as much as you can get it you know locally is super important I always keep honey on hand um, a different type of honey now I don't have this in an actual jar I got a little bit from my sister-in-law but this is Manuka honey. Manuka honey is from um, New Zealand and it's very expensive, but uh, you don't need very much of it. Manuka honey is mainly used for wound healing and um, it's incredible, it's healing properties. Uh, Savage, our older pit bull, she had a, uh, looks like a, a cyst I think had burst on the back of her neck a little while ago and I applied Manuka honey, Manuka honey only, to it for I think five or six days and it went from being this really gruesome, you know, open pus blood wound to healing beautifully and now there's just you know a little tiny scar left from it and that's all I did was you know make sure it was clean and put manuka honey on it a couple times a day so awesome stuff. Um, also on that line I kind of referenced this but aloe vera gel 
um, or even better keep an aloe plant. I have quite a few aloe plants and you know aloe is amazing. Um, medicinal properties, burns, sunburns, you know, wounds, uh, stuff like that. Aloe is also great for the throat. Um, if you have a sore throat, if you have a cough, aloe is really soothing to the throat. And if you have an aloe plant and you're growing it, you know, in good soil and you're not worried about, you know, chemical fertilizers and stuff like that, you can actually break open your aloe leaf, you can scrape it out and you can drink that or blend it in a smoothie or, you know, juice or something and that's going to be really soothing to the throat. I put aloe gel in um, my lotion again that I make because it's so great for the skin, so hydrating. Um, and also, um, you know, drink raw aloe as needed. And I keep this for making a burn salve with lavender oil, aloe, and raw honey and a little coconut oil. And that's what I typically will apply to any burns or wounds or things like that. Um, also vitamin E oil, which this is from Mountain, Robes er Mountain Rose Herbs, which is a company that I love. And vitamin E is amazing for healing the skin um, for different skin conditions. So this is just, you know, straight vitamin E. I, again, I put this in my lotion. A lot of um, these kind of more, you know, one ingredient type things are, are what I put in my um, own body products that I use. And vitamin E has so many amazing skin healing properties. Um, and, and that's something that I like to keep on hand for emergency type skin situations. Uh, getting towards the end here, this is a big jar of refined coconut oil. Now, um, technically unrefined is better when we're talking about the medicinal therapeutic benefits of coconut oil. However, unrefined coconut oil tastes like coconut. So you really can't use it for cooking unless you're cooking something that you want to have a strong coconut taste. Um, we don't like the taste of coconut in our, you know, everyday cooking. So we tend to keep refined coconut oil around because it doesn't taste like coconut. So this is like a multi-purpose jar. I will use this in my body products. I will use this in making, you know, salves and things like that or lotions or whatever the case um, for applying to wounds and this and that. Um, but we can also use this for cooking too, which is why I like to keep the refined around, but the unrefined is technically better. The last thing I'm gonna show you are these, which this is candy. Um, <laughs> these are ginger chews. Ginger chews are incredible for nausea especially. I lived off these during my pregnancies, um, but nausea, upset stomach, ginger chews are the way to go. I don't just eat these, you know, they're, yes, it is candy. Um, there's three grams of sugar per candy in here. Um, and they're not, they're not very big. They're just these little tiny like candies that you, you know, suck on. You don't want to just chew them. It's it would like destroy your teeth. It's kind of like, you know, taffy. Um, but they are so, so potent as far as ginger is concerned. That is way more effective in my mind than drinking a ginger ale. I am someone who grew up drinking ginger ale. If I had a sore throat or was sick, you know, my mom would always say, here you go, here's ginger ale. Um, but ginger twos work amazing for nausea and for upset stomach. So I always keep those in my uh, medicine cabinet so that I have them in case I'm ever dealing with that. So I feel like I've covered everything. Um, please let me know if you have questions or comments uh, down below. If you, you know, like this video, if you want to see more about natural health, natural medicine, again, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. I would love to bring you content that is relevant to your life, to what's going on in the world. Um, again, I'm not a doctor. Um, this is not medical advice. This is purely informational, but I have worked in the natural health field for almost a decade, and these are just tools that I've um, learn to have at my disposal to keep my family healthy, to avoid going to the doctor. Um, you know, I definitely believe in Western medicine. I think that there is a time and a place for going to the doctor. You know, um, my old boss, Dr. Herbold in New York would always say, you know, if I'm having a heart attack, call 911, call an ambulance, you know, there are certainly situations in which going to the doctor makes sense. But especially right now, the 
the current state of things in the world with what's going on with COVID-19, the coronavirus, um, and hospitals are, you know, facing being really overwhelmed um, with sick people and, you know, being short on supplies. If you have, you know, a, a mild something, whatever it is, a mild acute situation and it is manageable at home, by all means, you should be staying home. You should be protecting our healthcare workers by not just going into, you know, the hospital or even going into your doctor's office if you don't need to, if it's something that can be managed at home. You know, they are asking people, you know, the, the hospital workers, uh, the doctors, you know, healthcare professionals, their, their advice is to, at this point, stay home and manage it unless you feel like it's really serious. You know, if you're having trouble breathing, you have a high fever, things like that, you know, if, if that's something you're facing, then by all means, talk to your doctor. Um, I'm not in any way opposed to, you know, Western medicine. Um, and there is a time and a place for all of those things, but I am a firm believer in the beauty and bounty of the natural medicines that we have been provided that, you know, grow um, things that you can grow yourself, things that um, can be dried and preserved, like <clears throat> dried herbs here. Um, there are so many wonderful gifts that are outside that um, are made to be used as medicine, things that have been used as medicine for thousands of years, and also things that have in many ways inspired, um, you know, modern, traditional, conventional medicines as well. A lot of uh, pharmaceuticals are based off of natural plant medicines that they've then been altered by man and changed into a chemical structure and things like that. So um, I am a really big avid supporter um, and advocate of using natural medicine when at all possible and there are just so many beautiful wonderful things about nature um, natural medicine is not for everyone some people are skeptical there's a lot of research that's been done and there's a lot of research that hasn't been done so as someone who worked in the medical cannabis field for a lot of years and who has worked with naturopaths and functional medicine doctors and you know naturally minded MDs um, I have seen so many miracles through plant medicine. Just thinking of your body as a temple and, and wanting to take the best possible care of it. So food can be medicine or it can be poison. Um, these wonderful gifts that we have that are, you know, abundant and bountiful in the earth uh, can be amazing tools to have at home to help to take care of your family. So. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, sorry I couldn't, you know, finish it all in one day and have it uh, all be more cohesive, but you know, I work with what I have and uh, you know, mom life. I really hope that you guys um, are doing well. I know that things are stressful right now and we're all kind of facing this um, kind of change in what's normal in our everyday lives. And I think at a time like this, it's important to come together um, with, you know, responsible social distancing, but just as a, um, a community, especially for like-minded individuals who, you know, they want to be more sustainable and to pursue things like growing their own food and having their own medicine at home and being confident in helping to take care of their families, to feed their families. You know, this is a growing movement with people who are interested in homesteading, in small scale farming, permaculture, all of that, you know, these are the foundations of, um, of life for a lot of us. And this is something that's really important to me. This is something I've been passionate about for many, many years. You can be in control of your own health and again there are always exceptions and there are people who have chronic health conditions that need to be managed by a physician and that's not what i'm talking about overall you can be in control of your own health you can always be your own advocate and you absolutely can have medicine at home to help you and your family in times of acute or chronic illness. Thank you guys for watching my video today. I really appreciate the support. It's always helpful if you like, if you comment, if you subscribe to my channel, if you like this video, if you want to see other videos like this. Um, I appreciate all of you and have a great day.